We announced this afternoon at approximately 2 o'clock, Mr. Jeffrey Dexon Card, 22 years. Uh, there's no question about it. Very unusual. Uh, we haven't had anything like this in Santa Cruz County before, and, and I hope to God we never have anything like this again. Fourteen people have been murdered in Santa Cruz County in the last two months. The latest were four young men found over a quarter of a mile up a steep hillside in Henry Cowell State Park, a beautiful and very isolated area of the county. The bodies were found late yesterday afternoon by a brother to one of the victims. I will be requesting the district attorney, Peter Chang, to issue four additional first-degree murder complaints against Herbert Mullen for the slaying of these four men. Mullen, age 25, has previously been charged with the murder of members of the Gunnera family, the Francis family, and Fred Ferris. The request for the additional first-degree complaints come as a result of the laboratory comparisons of the bullets and shell casings found at the scene of the crime. The youth tried to get away from it all by illegally squatting on a steep hillside in Henry Cowell Redwoods State Park, more than a quarter of a mile off Highway 9. 24 hours after they were found, the four bodies were removed. By Monday morning, only one has been identified as Brian Scott Card. His brother, Jeffrey Card, discovered the body Saturday after hiking to the makeshift cabin site. Local people don't think Santa Cruz is the murder capital of the world, but there is concern, short of alarm, that a killer may still be at large. Christopher Chow, Eyewitness News, Assistant Sheriff County. Lee Davis, says the four youths were shot in the head around mealtime, apparently after a scuffle. At first, authorities believe the youths were killed with a 22 caliber pistol, similar to one used to kill an old fisherman, Fred Perez, last week. A 25-year-old Felton area resident, Herbert Mullen, has been charged with the murder of Perez and five others, Mr. and Mrs. James Genera and Mrs. Kathy Francis and her two children, who lived in a crude cabin. Authorities are operating with the theory that the multiple murders are linked to drug traffic in the area. Police believe the Genera and Francis families and the suspect, Herbert Mullen, were involved with drugs. However, the county sheriff could not say if Mullen is connected to the new murders or if there were any traces of drugs at the murder. Mention Santa Cruz, and this is the scene and mood that would normally come immediately to Here on a remote hilltop, dark at mid-morning because of the thickness of the forest, with two sheriff's deputies now on guard duty. The bodies of four young men were found last Saturday by the brother of one of them. He said they had chosen this kind of life. Sunday, the bodies were removed, and today they were identified as 18-year-old Robert Spector and 19-year-old Brian Card, both of Van Nuys, 18-year-old David Oliker of Sherman Oaks, and Mark Johnson, 19. From the village of Felton, just north of Santa Cruz City, down Highway 9 into Henry Cowell Redwood State Park, the site of the latest murder discovery. Sheriff James says there is fear among the people in his county, and he emphasizes that, in his words, law enforcement agencies are doing everything in their power and within their resources to provide full protection. Pat O'Brien, Eyewitness News, Santa Cruz. Police in Santa Cruz are not expecting a fast, dramatic solution to this trio of butcherings. It was routine work today, checking into the backgrounds of all the victims and into the background of the prime suspect, who was arrested in another series of killings. Herbert Mullen has been accused in 10 of the 15 murders tied to this South Coast community. However, Mullen's alleged connection with death has not involved the cutting up of the victims. And this apparently was the grisly pattern set in the death of the girl whose body parts were found scattered from here in Santa Cruz to Big Sur. And an even more horrible possibility has come to light with the findings of the two girls in Castro Valley. All the blood was pumped from their bodies indicating that they may have been butchered while they were still alive. Peter Burns, Eyewitness News, Santa Cruz. There is the possibility, according to County Sheriff Douglas James, 
that other bodies may be in the hills around Santa Cruz, hills so thickly forested that they preclude a detailed or exhaustive search to test that possibility. It was near here last weekend that the bodies of four young men were found. 25-year-old Herbert Mullen has been accused of those murders and six others. At the county office building today, District Attorney Peter Chang said he would seek grand jury indictments against Mullen and, when prodded by reporters, expressed his view about the onslaught of murder in his county. I think our old drug way of life and the fact that there's so many people on welfare and they come down here, anybody can get welfare, anybody can go out in the hills and do their own thing. Uh, um, our whole way of life and the responsibilities that we, we ask of individuals is, is ridiculous. Are the people in the county afraid at the moment? I don't know. There's been no expression of that to, the, to your office? I don't think there's the, the kind of fear that pervaded this county after the Otis were murdered. Why not? What would be different? Well, you had a lot of things in the Yoda case. You had that note that promised revenge on all people who had big houses. Uh, um, you had, uh, you just had a lot of bizarre, very bizarre things in that case that are not present here. But when did you stop it, Jackie? Well, about uh, a week ago. No, that's about last Monday, because that's when the report came out that the girls were missing. Mm -hmm. Did you do much hitchhiking before that? Well, I went down to town a lot. Not very much backup. I'd always take the bus because mm -hmm. I thought it was safe on campus. Do you ever have a bad experience? No. Cameron Smith, a UC Santa Cruz student, has organized the rape hotline. Well, first of all, I usually say, well, I don't know whether I should t talk to you. Is this the people that handle rape? And then they'll say, I've been assaulted or I've been raped. And then we'll say, well, do you want to talk on the phone or shall we come and see you? And very usually women say, I'd like to see you. So we go immediately. And the purpose is to comfort. Yeah, we used to hitchhike, but now it's not real safe to do it, so we don't. Why did you quit? Um, because of all the weird things that have been happening with the <laughs> rapes and other things like that. The head of one of the half dozen murdered or missing co-eds in the Santa Cruz area was found at the bottom of one of these canyons last August, and there has been a deluge of statements contributed to Kemper coming out of Pueblo about the co-ed murder cases. Sheriff's investigators said today he would be taken here for searching purposes if he confirms those statements when he arrives at the jail in this county. Pat O'Brien, Eyewitness News, near Santa Cruz. The focus of attention today was on two automobiles, those belonging to the suspect and to his mother, one of the women he is accused of murdering over the Easter weekend. The cars were sealed and towed into a Santa Cruz garage after discovery of the bodies of Mrs. Clara Strandberg and Mrs. Sarah Taylor in Mrs. Strandberg's Atlas apartment three days ago, the same day Kemper was arrested in a Pueblo, Colorado phone booth. With experts from the San Mateo County Sheriff's Department assisting, investigators went over both vehicles this morning quite thoroughly first photographing what they saw, then with rubber-gloved hands taking it out of the car, putting it in a labeled sack, and re-recording each item on a list being compiled. Of course, there was the dusting for fingerprints, too, and if anything they considered significant in their investigation was noted or found, they would not say so at this time. Thursday, a human skull was dug out of the backyard of that Aptos apartment where Kemper and his mother, Mrs. Strandberg, lived. Today, the Sheriff's Department here said identification by the county pathologist would probably not come before next Monday. There is a strong possibility Kemper will be brought up to this general area of the Santa Cruz Mountains sometime this weekend. There are persistent reports that more grizzly finds are going to be made. But at the district attorney's office and the sheriff's office, nobody's talking. Jack Bates reporting in Aptos. Well, depending on uh, uh, 
weather and what routes they may take. He'll be back any time between uh, Friday and uh, Monday, and we intend Monday to uh, take him to court and arraign him uh, for the two murders, uh, uh, the one count uh, uh, for murdering his mother and uh, the second count uh, for the murder of her friend. say much he seemed like kind of a mama's boy i always was kind of afraid of him actually he scared me a lot and i heard him and his mother argue quite a bit all the time attorney peter chang has just returned from pueblo where he interviewed kemper chang says kemper will be arraigned on two first degree murder charges next monday but he cannot say yet whether kemper is connected with the murders of six santa cruz area college co -ed. an investigation is underway uh, to see uh, to what extent uh, uh, Kemper is related to those killings. You talked to him in Colorado, Mr. Chang. How uh, did he appear? How did he strike you? What was his demeanor? He was extremely affable, cooperative, and uh, articulate and uh, intelligent. Carla Gervasoni lives right above this duplex. She said deputies came and started digging about 10 this morning. And she recalled some of her impressions about 24-year-old Edmund Emil Kemper, the man accused of murdering his mother and her friend. He was too quiet sometimes, and he was always taking things, you know, back and forth. Guns. He had guns that I saw. That's, I guess that's why I thought he was strange. <laughs> they scared me. In other matters, perhaps a bit more pertinent to the case here, there is talk among the sheriff's personnel that Kemper will be transferred to either Soledad Prison or San Mateo County Jail for security purposes and because some of the other inmates in the Santa Cruz County Jail are becoming uneasy over his presence here. His attorney Jackson said he would protest such a move because of the time delay involved. In any event, Kemper is due back in court here June 6th. Pat O'Brien, Eyewitness News, Santa Cruz. He apparently, according to what he says, uh, fantasized about doing this for quite a long period of time. And he states that uh, it, he never would have been able to have acted out any of this fantasy if it were not for the fact that uh, there were so many attractive, naive girls hitchhiking in the Bay Area and in this county. The next court date for Kemper is May 21st. He's scheduled to enter a plea at that time. Pat O'Brien, Eyewitness News, Santa Cruz. Why do you think you were spared any of the violence? Well, I believe it was the brother we built her while he was living here. And uh, he used to sit there and watch, and I think she made it possible that he couldn't touch us. Do you think the Blessed Mother was looking over you? Oh, definitely. How do the neighbors feel? Do they all know about it now? Well, some do, and some are not aware of it yet. He was a nice guy, this 24-year-old giant. Edmund Kemper never bothered his neighbors on this Alameda street, paid his rent, and went his own way. Except for his 6 foot 9, 280 pound frame, he could have gone unnoticed. He was a very, he was an average person. He um, blended in with everybody. I mean, he talked a lot. 
when we had a um, barbecue down here in the backyard last July. But the only time he didn't talk too much is when, like, if I'd meet him in the garage by myself or he was coming in and I was going out or the other way around, he wouldn't, all he would say is hi and that was it. But if he tried to start a conversation with him, it was kind of useless, you know, he, he never really volunteered anything. So. How do you feel now that you found out he was a neighbor? Scared stiff, because he really was a neighbor. I lived right next door in the, the next apartment next to him. And... Uh, just gives me the creeps is kind of an understatement. Kepper lived here last year, but it is now that the aftershocks are setting in and the Benz family will continue to rely on the Blessed Mother for protection. Peter Burns, Eyewitness News.